Hello and a warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. Got John here with us tonight, Sunday night, to go over everything that's happened over the weekend. A brilliant weekend for Celtic, Celtic fans, supporters, players, the lot. Uh, just a brilliant weekend. Celtic winning 3 nothing against St Mirren. Rangers losing 3-2 against Ross County earlier today. Got John here. How, how are you tonight, John? All right, Xander. Good after that. All good, isn't it? It's all very good. It's, things are looking good, uh, as the famous song goes, John. Things are looking good. Aye, uh, well, lots of songs. It's all so beautiful. Uh, I don't know, there's millions of songs, isn't there? Aye, there's a lot of, <laughs> lots of happy songs. <laughs> uh, there's lots. Uh, beautiful Sunday is another one. Um, but we could go on and on about that. But yeah, outstanding performance for Celtic in the second half. On Saturday, John, it was... Uh, it's a game of two halves again, though, isn't it? It's the same thing happened last week against Rangers. Same thing happened this week against St Mirren. We've, we've got, really got to start cutting these games of two halves out and start performing for the full 90 minutes, especially these last five games. Aye, but... Well, I missed the first half yesterday. I told you that, didn't I, earlier? Uh, <laughs> because of internet problems, I missed the first half. That's yeah. I never, I never seen any of that. Obviously, Celtic... Celtic had a TIFO. I noticed that with the amount of rubbish it was on the park. Uh, in the second half, I've seen the second half. But I've got to have to uh, compliment the Celtic groundsman, by the way. That park looks immaculate. Or is it just the fact that it never gets played on? Well, it does get played on, obviously, John. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's the length of time between games, isn't it? You know, you've got one home game, then four away games. I know I'm over exaggerating slightly, but that's what it feels like. We play at home, then there's about three away games, then we play at home again, so the play, the part's getting plenty of time to recover, I think. I the pitch looked immaculate yesterday, so uh, well done, uh, the groundsman at Celtic Park, but it's just a mess, wasn't it, or the TIFO stuff flying about. I don't know, it adds something to a game that I think, it adds that kind of just won the league feel to the game. <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. And we'll get into... Both results over the weekend, John, as we go through the podcast. But first of all, I want to get through all the stuff nice and early, like subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. But the first thing I want to do is the correct score competition, John, for your choice of prize, the Billy the Legends for Imprint, the Zippo Lighter Celtic Forever logo and the ballpoint pen with the Celtic Forever logo on it, box set there. Uh, so that was the prize for this week. There was three correct entries, John. Three said three nothing. So congratulations to everybody else that entered and thank you for entering as well. But your three correct entries were Wes Kell, Kev Dunn, Roseanne and Collins was your four correct entries. So we're going to do a wee prize draw, John. So it's a wee minute we'll do this wee prize draw, right? So let's get started with the draw for the correct score. Celtic 3, St Mirren 0. Three correct entries. The correct entries were Wes Kell. We had Kev Dunn. We had Collins. And we had Roseanne. So that was your four correct entries there. That's your four correct entries. And obviously whoever gets drawn out of the hat will get to pick the prize this week. So you've got the choice of the Celtic Forever Zippo later. The Celtic Forever boxed pen there, and the Celtic Forever Legends frame print, and it's the Billy McNeil frame print for this week. So good luck to everybody in the draw. Let's get started. So what what I'm going to do is put the names into the hat. There's your hat there. So let's open the hat there. Right, here we go. So first name in is Roseanne. And she goes. Collins. And he goes, Kev Dunn, new entry there for Kevin, Kevin's a new entry into the competitions and Weser is also a new entry into the competitions, so good luck to all four, so that's all four in the hat, okay, right. we'll give it a wee shake about and I'll put it that way so I can easily can, so good luck all four. Here we go, and I'll push one out the hat, here we go. Right, so the winner for this week's prize, choice of prize obviously, the winner is 
Wes Kell. Congratulations, Wes. You've got your choice of prize this week. So you are the winner of this week's correct score competition, Wes. Well done. And congratulations to the other three there. Um, unlucky uh, this week. Just keep entering the prizes. And unlucky to everybody else that entered the competition. So congratulations to Wes Kell, John, on winning the prize for this week. I'll contact him on Facebook and ask him what prize it is he wants. So Wes Kell wins the prize, John. So uh, choice of prizes there. He's, uh, he's no one of the regulars, John, but he's got a choice of prize to pick from there. Aye. Uh, good prizes as well. Zippo Lighter still uh, uh, embossed pens with the Celtic Forever logo, the frame print. And well done, Wes, and winning. And don't forget, Wes, to go into the YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel. Yes, right, Wes. Subscribe to the channel as well. That's right, if you're not already done so. That would be brilliant if you could do that. And anybody else that's watching the podcast, if you could hit that subscribe button, that would be superb. So commiserations to Kev Dunn, Roseanne and Collins. All had the correct entry there. Better luck next time. Uh, but it has to go to a draw, John, didn't it, if there's more than one correct entry? Of course it does. Uh. You've got to be fair to people. It's uh, well done, Wes, and uh, commiserations to the other ones that got the correct the correct score. Um, it's, it's hard to predict a right score in the game, isn't it? I mean, I'm not bragging or anything, but ask me to get another one. <laughs> I was just about to bring it up, John, in case you thought I forgot. Yeah, John, two weeks in a row. That's outstanding. That's that's brilliant. That's uh, what does that make the score? Six five, something like that. Six five, aye. Uh-huh. Close, five games to go, John. Very I th- close. I think it's actually seven five. I'm sure you've got seven right now. I've got five because I'm sure you've got seven. So I think it's seven five, Xander. I'm not sure, John. I, 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 know, I know it is quite close, but uh, but it's another correct score for you, John. So well done to you as well. Three nothing. And you know, I don't want to go on about it. I said, I said, uh, two nothing, didn't I? But uh, it was, a, it was a game of two halves, and as I said earlier, John, that's what we need to cut out. You know, very little chances in that first half, and then pounding their goal in the second half uh, and getting three goals in the second half. But let's go through the game, John. Right, let's go through it. We said on Friday's podcast that it'd be a full squad, but we didn't know at that point, John, that Scales and Maida were both out injured. So Naroki and Yang started the place of Scales and Maida. Have you heard, because I've not heard myself, how long these players are going to be for John Maida and Skills? No, I've not checked up on any of that stuff. Sander have been busy, so I've not had the time to check up on it. But mm-hmm. I hope it's no long term. I know what Brendan says it was something the day we are possible tight hamstring with Dyson Maida. He never mentioned that in about uh, Liam Skills, of course. I don't, I don't remember him. If he did, I don't remember what he says, but I remember him saying Dyson did have a, a, a slight tweak his upper hamstring so so I could be a couple of weeks then can't it if it's his hamstring aye it could be aye but let's hope it's no let's hope it's just a wee tweak he's felt and that's, he's alright for the next game yeah okay and that's, that brings us on to the next game John competition for the next game which is against Aberdeen so competition for this week is just okay. the same as this week we're looking for the correct score against Aberdeen in the semi-final at Hamden on Saturday. It's correct score. One guess each, everybody. Guess into the comment section. And this week, we're still giving you the choice of prize. Uh, we're going to give you the choice of the Zippo Lighter again, the ballpoint pen and the box set there, and the Henrik Larsson Legends Frame print. So that's your choice of prize for this week. So get entering, folks, into the, into the comments section. Even if you're on Facebook, enter the, into the comments there as well. Um... And good luck to everybody with this week's prize. Right, John, into the game. Here it goes. I know you didn't see any of the first half, Sean, so I'll just quickly run through this, right? Obviously, the conditions were wild yesterday, John. You seen that, didn't you? The, how bad the conditions were. Ah, I seen that. The, the wind blowing the rubbish about the park and all that. Eh? Oh, I was watching the first, first half. It's the players couldn't control the ball. And the, the, I was saying to myself, the, the both sets of players are trying to adjust to these conditions, but they didn't. Whole first half couldn't adjust it. it. was that bad. Just a swirling, swirling wind. It was really bad. Um, so, uh, the first thing I noticed, uh, there was nothing really happening in the first half, John, but the big boy Taylor diving to win himself a penalty in the box. Same as last weekend. Nothing given. No yellow card. Play on. Um, 
So that was a dive, uh, a total dive, John. But uh, the referee, who was uh, who was the referee yesterday again? McLean, wasn't it? McLean was the referee. Uh, he gave nothing, John, for another dive uh, against Celtic. That's two weeks in a row. No, uh, I did see the dive because I've seen the highlights clips, of course. I mm-hmm. did see the dive, but it was just like, well, it's a dive and that was it. Basically, just went away. So it was one of the guys, I don't know who has uploaded the highlights, but they go kind of fast, you know, they don't show you the slow mo replays or anything. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't really make keep my tail out, but I could see it was a dive, which is disgusting. But I, we don't uh, want diving in the game. No, no, back no. Yeah, uh, Silver. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you even mention that name, I just laugh. <laughs> we need your comedy acts like him right enough. That's it. Even though he's robbed us of three points, John, it's, I just think of the guy's face and I laugh. Anyway, back to the St. Mirren game. That was uh, a shocking dive and he, and he got away with it, John. So um, uh, we just move on. Uh, there was no much really uh, happening. Another incident re- regarding the referee. Because uh, there was no really any action, Celtic. I don't even think Celtic had many shots in goal the first half. It was Yang and a head knock with a St. Mirren player. I can't remember who the St. Mirren player was, John. But both are down with this head knock. Both of them are down with the head knock. Both of them get treatment. Yang has to go off to come back on, but the St. Mirren player doesn't. I don't know if you've seen that in your highlights. Uh, seen it on the highlights, eh? Did you see that? I, that, that what, what is going on there? Celtic player has to go off, so we're down to 10 men. But St. Mary can play on with 11 for the exact same injury. Uh, I don't know what's going on at all, but obviously Yang got two calf later for the, for the head knock, didn't he, in the second half? Uh, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So it's not the first head, head knock Yang's had. Uh, he's had a lot of bad tackles on him, Yang, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah. Yang seems to be in the walls anytime he's playing. He's, he's either getting sent off or he's injured or he's, there's always something happening with Yang. So uh, he had to go off eventually, but we'll get to that. To be fair, the Samaritan player, he had to go off as well. So hope both players are OK. Um, and just to cut in, John, just to cut in on the game, we diversion here. The YouTube strike is over, obviously. So cause just what you mentioned in there, this, you were watching the highlights on the, the YouTube Obviously, other channels don't get strikes as only as they get them, so we can't put any videos on anymore. Um, but the strike is over, John, so we've waited a long, long, long three months and we can only hope that the channel starts picking up again uh, pretty quickly. Aye, fingers crossed. Um, we're not the only channel that gets strikes. A lot of channels get strikes, but uh, the reason uh, this channel gets strikes is because you showed a video for years ago, a, a compilation of old uh, Celtic captains, was that? I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was uh, managers no longer with us, wasn't it? Is that what it was? Uh, yeah. Something like that. And it gets a straight ridiculous old footage by the 60s and 70s, 80s, or whatever. And it gets a strike. It's not as if you're showing a live Celtic game here or anything, you know? Yeah, that's what I don't understand. You're saying you're watching the highlights, John, and uh, these channels. I mean, I go into YouTube and I see millions and millions and millions of Celtic uh, up the uploads, John, and uh, so these channels are not getting the strikes, but it doesn't matter, it's over now, John, the three months is coming and gone, that's that's the strike over and um, we can now get back to normal hopefully, John, hopefully Right, let's round off the first half, the last minute of the game, John, to have a great chance to score, and it's all a sign here for them, in the 45th minute header over the bar, the guy's unlucky um, that could have been us one nothing down there, John that was... Uh, that was the, the closing minutes of the first half. Uh, just a, a shocking first half. I know you didn't. I know you didn't see it, so it's hard to discuss it with myself, if you know what I mean. But but just as I said earlier, we've got to cut out these games of two halves, John. We've got to start performing for the first ninety minutes and these last five fixtures of the season. Aye, I did see that as well. By the way, that the uh, head of that boy had old lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Old Lasagna over the bar. Thank goodness Old Lasagna hit it over the bar, John, because if that would have uh, nestled into the net, I think it would have been a totally different same half. I, well, I don't know how much part the wind played in the first half for Celtic. Uh, 
I don't know. I didn't see. I can't. I can't comment on the first half at all. Apart from the things that you mentioned, I seen them in the highlights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, just glad that the boy headed over because I've been doing a very, very <laughs> nervy second half if I if I scored there. So before we go into the second half, John, I want to bring up the the lady that died at Celtic Park yesterday. Just uh, you know, our thoughts with her or with her family. Fifty four year old lady who died in the toilet area of Celtic Park yesterday, John. So rest in peace to. To her, obviously, her name's not been announced or anything yet, but rest in peace to the lady that died, 54-year-old, in the Celtic Park toilets. And uh, our thoughts go out to her family. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's a shame that, isn't it? Uh, yeah. woman just getting ready to go to the game, doesn't know she's going to... Well, we don't know what happened to the woman. We don't know what happened to her. But well, RIP, yeah, rest in peace, and like you say, uh, condolences to all our family and friends. It's a shocker, uh, you know, just going to a Celtic game and they don't come back for it. So that's uh, shocking. That's under eye. Yeah, yeah. And we'll hear more about that as the days go on. We don't, we don't have a name for this lady yet. So uh, rest in peace anyway to the lady, Celtic supporter, and condolences to her family. All right, John, let's get into the second half. Uh, right away. We noticed it was a different second half, John. We were sharp, crisp, lovely passing was back. The closing down was back, John. So um, it was good to see that we came out with a bit of intent in the second half. Aye, aye. It's always good to see. Like I say, I was watching the the thing on my phone, you know, the updates with the score, and it was like nothing each at half time. This was bad. Eventually, I got the game on, and the uh, first thing I seen was. Uh, I'll most, we'll get to it eventually, what I've seen, the first thing I've seen. But, <laughs> um, I will get to the goals and because they're coming up fairly quickly. 49 minutes, John Kyogo and Carter Vickers getting each other's way. Uh, it was a delightful... Alistair Johnson's crossing yesterday was just out of this world, wasn't it? But it was a delightful cross. Kyogo and Carter Vickers. I think Kyogo nicks that away for Vickers, actually, didn't he? He was a better leaving it for big Carter Vickers to head it into an empty net. And the ball goes wide. That was a uh, that was our first chance, John, in the second half. I I missed that as well, Xander. I didn't see the whole second half. I think I seen about thirty five minutes or something, but I missed that one as well. Yeah, uh, well, that was a, a great chance. What a ball it was as well. What a cross. I think the wind was in our favour in the second half, John. I think you're right. Um, but Kyogo heads it away for Vickers. You know, he heads it away for him, and the ball goes wide. The next stage of play, John, 52nd minute, we get our goal, and it's Satate, John. What a finish from our Japanese superstar, John, Rio Hatate. Alistair Johnson assist. Uh, as I say, he was uh, possibly man in the match yesterday. We'll get to that. But Hatate outside the box, outside of the foot, John, top corner, past the goalkeeper. Keeper had no chance for that effort, didn't he, John? Aye, I had no chance for that. What a beautiful finish for Hitati. Uh-huh. First time, high into, the, high into the roof of the net, outside of the boot. That was a beautiful wee finish, but I missed that as well. I've seen that in the highlights. <laughs> yeah, okay, right. We'll get to the bits you did see, I promise. <laughs> um, 54 minutes, two minutes later, John, we have a fresh air sweep from Yang. Another beautiful cross for Alistair Johnston, right to the toe of Yang. No day near him. Yeah, <laughs> I was actually laughing at this. He actually uh, has a swipe at the ball, John. He misses the ball altogether. Nobody near him. Uh, golden chance gone there to make it 2 nothing. two minutes later, John. Uh, did you see the fresh air swipe? It was only two minutes later, so I'd imagine you wouldn't have seen that either. No, I was absent at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're missing all the good action. It's uh, What a chance. What a chance it was for Yang to bury the game early in the second half. Uh, but he misses his chance. It's a fresh air sweep. So we move on to our second goal. John eventually comes in the 61st minute. And it's the wee man, Kyogo, a header. He seems to score a lot of these heads, Kyogo, John. Aye, that's where I step in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go for that. What did you see? <laughs> I've seen the goal. <laughs> i seen the... Was it Alistair Johnston that crossed it in? Johnston again, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, so I seen that. I seen uh, that's when I turned. I got eventually get the the link to work. Mm-hmm. 
and it was uh, I seen Alistair Johnson a bit bit to cross it in. Was a wee bit of play between Hatati and Johnson in the ball? I can't remember if that was that goal. Yeah. Hatati feed Johnson and he crossed it into Kyogo. Very possibly, John. It was, uh, Johnson was all over the place yesterday. He was everywhere in, in the game in the second half. Uh, I I seen that. I said, look, when I turned it on, all I seen was Alistair Johnson was he was playing really well, put it that way. But I did aye. see the cross in for the goal and Kyogo head on, and that's where I switched it on. Because I'm up after my seat as soon as I switched it on, I'm up after my seat when the cross is going on. It's like, ah, it's in before it even got to Kyogo. Aye. Uh, yeah. I was right, bang in the net, two nothing. Ah, uh, brilliant. Man. Another header for the wee man. And John is, Johnston's been working on his crossing with lots of things because uh, every one of them put a target yesterday, every cross, not one of them went out of the park. He's a top player, Alistair Johnson, isn't he? He's, he gets high marks off us every week. I don't remember a week going by where he's no had high marks, at least a seven anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's a fantastic player, Alistair Johnson. I, I've liked him since the moment he came into Celtic. Very, very brave. Very powerful. And uh, he can put a cross in. He can put a tackle in. He's got pace. He's good. He, he can do the lot, Alistair Johnson. Uh, ideal for Celtic, eh? the ideal right back, I think. Uh, we we'll get an equal to that on the left hand side. We've got uh, a good fullbacks in that team. But don't get me wrong, we Greg Taylor is a crank me fullback as well. Yeah, but he didn't have his best game yesterday, John. I don't think, but we'll get to the scores very soon. This this next incident, John, that I was laughing as well. The sixty sixth minute, it was uh, it was just <laughs> what it was was Kun Yang and Hatati, all three of them. Have an effort on goal within twenty seconds. <laughs> um, so the three shots on target, a couple of saves, and then the final one goes by the post. Uh, Kun first, then it was Hatati, then it was Yang John. So um, we're really trying to put this game to, to bed early in the second half, haven't we? Did you see these three shots at goal? Aye, I've seen it. Aye, uh, good, good. Uh, what did you think? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, these things happened, didn't they? You get a few shots in a row and that, but I uh, no, it didn't end up in a, being a goal. But for what I've seen in the second half, when I started watching it, and I'm thinking the first half was nothing each, surely it must have been a lot worse than this because Celtic were all the other place, they were all the other. Uh, it was just the conditions John killed us in the first half. It was we, we tried, we tried, we just could not control that football in the first half, and then the wind was in our favour in the second half. I thought that's that's what I think anyway. Uh, all right, John. Substitution time run about the 75th, 80 minute mark, 75 minutes. Uh, Bernardo for Hatate, McGregor for Iwata, Palmer for Yang, Ida for Kyogo, and a few minutes later it was Forrest for uh, Kun. So, plenty of substitutions there, John. It's like a different team, isn't it? Uh, with all these subs. I as it. I think it takes a sting at the game a wee bit that we all these subs getting made. Because mm-hmm. you're fielding a new team, fresh legs and all that. Try to get them up to speed it takes a bit of time. So, I, I, I think it kind of kills the game a wee bit that bringing all that amount of subs on at the same time. Four subs at the one time. Too much. Yeah. Eighth minute, either over the bar. Another wee chance there, either over the bar. Eighth third minute. Forest wide for about 17 yards. Forest seems to be playing okay then, eh, John. Anytime I've seen him coming on, he's having a decent game. Aye, aye, he's doing okay. It's all right for putting on for the last 15 minutes, Forrest, isn't it? 15, 20 minutes. Puts in a great wee cross, Forrest, still, didn't it? The wee dinked chips to the back post. Very dangerous. He's, he's good at that, Forrest. Yeah, yeah, he's good at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's. He seems to be improving whenever I see him this season, John. He seems quite sharp, quite fresh, uh, quite dynamic, I think. He looks he looks good, I think, James E. Forrest. So it's still good to have him in the team as a backup player. I suppose you're right there, John. Aye, aye. I don't think he'll last uh, beyond this season, though. I think this will be his last. Mm, OK, we'll wait and see, John. 86 minute, 3 nothing. Ida, John, header, six yards out. Uh, I was just bouncing about in the box there. When the keeper gets another couple of saves, and the breaks to the big man Ida eventually, and it's just a looping header over the goalkeeper, no power in it, just a wee looping number into the net, three nothing. 
Game's a bogey. Three points are in the bag. Everybody's happy. Uh, Big Eda on the score sheet again, John. All right, fantastic. The only one that wasn't happy was we Robinson bouncing about in the touch there, touch line there, wasn't he? In his uh, kangaroo impersonation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't pay much attention to him because he's, uh, you know, he's anyway. It doesn't matter, I think. But he's uh, he's shot his mouth quickly, John, because the game's a ball get eight six minute, three goals in the second half, and it should have been four, John, for Palmer Sitter in the ninetieth minute. Exact same as a couple of weeks ago, went to the Palmer Sitter, no Danny Hiram, hits it wide. So, uh, yeah, I think everybody everybody just wanted home at that point. It was about a wild day. Final whistle goes 3 nothing Celtic, 3 nothing and three goals, uh, three points, sorry, and three goals to add to the goal difference, John, which brings us on to. Sorry, sorry. Before we go on to that, I was going to bring, bring up the Rangers game of the day, but let's get, let's get into the. Uh, the player scoring, John. We'll quickly run through this, right? Player scoring, one to ten, player performance, and it's difficult because it's a game of two halves. So I'll real quickly run through the one to tens, then, John. Right, Joe Hart and goal, couple of wee saves there at one point. So seven and a half for a big Joe. Greg Taylor was probably the poorest man of the match. If you know what I mean, he probably had uh, the worst performance of all the players. I thought Greg, maybe it was just condi- conditions couldn't cope with him. So Greg, I'm giving a five. We had Naroki who had to come off. I'll give him a six. Big Carter Vickers was brilliant again, John. So eight for Big Carter Vickers. Alistair Johnson, nine. Uh, Wata, seven and a half. We had Matt O'Reilly who had a quiet game, six. We had Tatate, we'll give him an eight. Outstanding again. Beautiful goal. We had, who did we have on the wings again? Uh, who did we start with on the, on the left? He was that good, I can't remember. Uh, Yang, so give Yang a five and a half. No very influential, I didn't think. Kyogo, give him an eight. Brilliant again for me, Kyogo. And on the right, we had Kuhn, who was decent. Give him a seven. Decent, decent performance for the boy. And my man of the match goes to... It's between three for me, John. It's Satate, Carla Vickers and Johnston. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Hatati for an absolutely outstanding goal. Beautiful goal, John, outstanding. Um but really it should be Johnston though, because he's he's assists. I, he, he was a he was an assist for all three goals at one point. So it's about even the third the third goal was like a second assist. It was his cross into the box that caused the problems. But yeah, I'm giving my man a match to Hatati. All right, fair enough. I've seen, seen Hatati for how long was he on before? 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes worth of him. I've seen I, he looked outstanding again, Xander. What a player. And it's what a time to have Hatati back, John. Five games to go in the league, the split. Hopefully these these uh, fixtures will be announced in midweek. You know, uh, you can just imagine what would have happened if Rangers would have played a Dundee team, John, that we had to fight for these points. Dundee now don't need to fight on Wednesday night when they play Rangers. They're already guaranteed a top six place. So Dundee can lie back and relax and feel their weakened team do whatever they want because it doesn't matter. They've uh, they've already made the top six. Which brings us on to today's fixture between Ross County and Rangers, John. 3-2 to Ross County, John. Rangers lose the game. And it puts us in an absolutely fantastic position. Aye. Uh, before I even mention Ross County, Dundee, I know they don't have a... Uh, they'll have something to play for in the top six. And teams that don't have anything really to play for can prove uh, dangerous. Because they're relaxed, they've nothing to lose. And a team that's got something to play for can be a danger to themselves because they're under pressure. So, I don't know. You don't know what's going to happen with Dundee. They might put up a fight there. Not a fight, but they might be so relaxed they don't care. They'll just go and play their game while the team they're playing against is under pressure to get three points. Yeah, it's just a case of wait and see. It's, I just think a, a Dundee that needed a point would have got that point against Rangers, John, and I think that uh, that would have followed on to the day and 
you know, anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's talk about the days, the days game, John. Ross County against Rangers. No, nobody, and I mean nobody, thought Ross County would have won that game, John. No, me included. <clears throat> Although I did, I did think there'd be a chance. Going up to Dingwall is always tricky. Maybe a chance at a point. Slim chance at that. But uh, first time in Ross County's history ever beating them. Well done, Ross County. Fantastic. I've, I watched the highlights of the game right after it. Uh, aye, well, look, thank you, Ross County. That's off. The every Celtic fan, thank you, Ross County, because that was absolute bliss. And I'll tell you what else it was. Absolute karma. Or they're cheating last week and they're bottle thrown and all that. They're disgusting behaviour. That's their karma. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree, John. It was uh, that that's, my hand the last week. It's like, that's gone now, right? So nothing's obviously going to get done about these bottle thrown incidents. It's, it's a way down the line now, John. Nothing's been said. No arrests have been made. No, no bans from the stadium. Nothing like that. So we've just got to move on. But as you say, karma today. Up at Dingwall, Ross County, John. Rangers get their usual penalty, their usual 10 minutes of injury time to try and get them back into the game. It uh, didn't work. Ross County battling for the, the three points, John, to stay in the league. Uh, so, well done to Ross County, as you say. And thank you from every Celtic supporter. Well done. And by the way, maybe some of these teams in the SPL, your Hearts, your Hibs, your Kamarnocks, should take a leaf out of your Ross County book. Well, you're not going to get that uh, in the top six. It just depends who's fighting for what, Xander, Europe. European places, they're the teams that's going to put up the fight against both us and them. Uh, especially Kamarnock, that's one, and that's the potential banana skin for both teams, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now, it's, it's, them getting beat the day means we can, we, can, we can maybe afford to lose one more point. Obviously, we don't want to lose any points. It's got to be five wins. Straight down the line, five wins. We win the league, John. Well, exactly. I Well, we could have won the league without Ross County doing anything today if yeah. we won all our games. But that's just made it a wee bit nicer, you know, a wee bit, wee bit of leeway, sort of. A, but no, I want Celtic to go for the jugular. jugular and every one of these five games left, kill these teams off, put three, four, five past every one of them, including Sefco. Yeah. Yeah, well said, John. All right. So that puts us four points clear at the top of the league. Four points clear. Rangers have a game in hand against Dundee. We don't know where that game's going to be played. We don't know where the condition Dens Park is going to be in. So we'll keep an eye on that one. But good luck to Dundee on Wednesday anyway. And uh a we draw a we draw when maybe suit is there. What do you think? Uh, I'll take a draw a day, hi. Um a win would be nice, all right enough. Keep that yeah. four-point gap. How nice would that be? Yeah, be outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. If we, if we can go four points clear with zero games in hand for any of the, uh, any of the, the two teams, that would be ideal. But we'll wait and see what happens on Wednesday night when Rangers play Dundee. And hopefully these fixtures will be announced on Wednesday as well because the Celtic supporters will want to know what we're up against in the, in the last five games, John, and I can guarantee your first game will be Hearts away, and then it'll be Rangers at Celtic Park, I can guarantee you that. Oh, I, I don't know, but we'll wait and see what happens. It's, got, it's interesting anyway, isn't it? It's an interest in the last five games. Very interesting. It's, 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 it's no going to be uh, easy on the heart. <laughs> it's not going to be easy on the heart, no. Um, but you never know, this is where Celtic season actually might start kicking in, believe it or not, with five games to go. Five games to go, our season might start uh, blooming, blossoming, you know, whatever you want to say. It's uh, We might start, as you say, putting these teams to bed, 3 nothing up at half-time, etc., etc. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for that Celtic to return, John, aren't we? Aye. I watched a wee bit of a Rangers podcast, maybe about 30 seconds, that was enough. You know, I was like, get that off. Um, they were talking about getting rid of other players and all that, and they only want to keep two players, so it's hilarious. It's like, as funny as this is, I just kind of listen to these guys. Um, <laughs> but is that what they're saying? They want rid of other players after one defeat? Uh, he was a good manager when he came in and all that, but he's no doing anything anymore. <clears throat> yeah, well. you, know, 
you know something, John? You, you, let, let's break it down. I know we're a Celtic podcast, but <clears throat> they are our nearest challengers, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. But mother will beat them at Ibrox. We go poor Europe with a very, very poor Benfica team who the week before just got gubbed 6 nothing, John. Right? So you've got to remember that as well. Then they, they kind of beat us at their own den. We all these screaming fans, the referee, the VAR, everything else that went on, the bottle throwing, etc., etc. They still can beat us, and then they get beat with Ross County the day. So this is the press. It's, the press in Scotland is hyping Rangers up, John. Well, they always have done since day one, haven't they? When they used to be called Rangers, I mean. But yeah. ah, it's, it's just a joke. The way the press have bummed them up to be something that they're not. They looked at their team last week, says it. They're nothing. Their team are absolutely ranked run. I do not know how they are second in the league. A bad team. Really bad team. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, uh, they've, they've made a fist at it, to be fair, right? They've made a fist at it this season, but, you know, they've never, ever played, you know, look at last Sunday at Ibrox, playing Celtic. Long ball, punt into the box, punt after punt after punt into that box, John. There's no... Football being played uh, at the other side of Glasgow. Um, we were the team playing all the football in Ibrox, John. We were passing the ball about beautifully. And all they could do was punt the ball into the box. So that's the type of team that they are. Um, so five games to go, John. Five games. Um, we don't know what the next fixture is in the league. Obviously, the next game for us is Hamden Park, John. Let's have a wee touch on that. Hamden Park. Celtic against Aberdeen in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup, John. Aberdeen, obviously, with Ross County winning the day, it drags them right back into that relegation battle. So they may have their minds elsewhere, if you like. Ah, they may have their mind elsewhere. I don't, don't know. Don't, but look, we only, can only look at Celtic. That's all we are looking at, Celtic. That's all we can look at. Uh, yeah, but we're playing Aberdeen, John. So how do, how do you think How do you think it's, it's going to go? It's... I think I think they're they're going to be concentrating on the league, the league campaign, John. And I think I think we're going to go to Hamden, and it'll be a breeze. To be honest with you, I don't know if it'll be a breeze, but they've uh, they're in a semi semi final for the Scottish Cups, and they're not going to be uh, they're not going to have their minds wandering somewhere else. I don't think they're going to want to win that cup, Aberdeen. They're going to want to you know parade a, a trophy for their fans. I've waited years for one, so. I think that'll be top of their priority is getting into the final and giving themselves a chance of winning a trophy for their fans. But I don't yeah. know, it's just, my, it's just my thinking, of course, but well, we don't know. We don't know what Aberdeen's going to show up. And I hope it's the one you were talking about, the one with their mind on other things. Yeah, that's it. And uh, Obviously, Aberdeen want to win the Cup. Maybe they they don't want to win the Cup. I just think their minds will be elsewhere. doesn't matter if their minds are elsewhere or not, John. We're on forum. Celtic are on forum. And I think it'll be a breeze, and I think we'll put them to bed two or three nothing, John. But oh, we'll get to, we'll get into that in the preview, I suppose, nearer the time. Um, all right, John, what are you thinking with the uh, comments? Have you got the comments for us this week? Ah, I don't know. I was just still wandering away there in my mind uh, recently. This the game of the day, you know, it's just such a beautiful moment. <laughs> beautiful, absolutely stunning. Well done, Ross County. We can't thank you enough. I'll say it again. And the yeah. wee uh, Rangers fan looking at his windy. I've seen the highlights and the camera zoomed onto a windy around the stadium. All right. And there's a Rangers fan hanging out the windy with his Rangers tap on. Get your windy shut. Get your curtains shut. Go <laughs> to bed. The league's over, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's confidence, John. That's confidence. Um, but, Aye, uh, a wee bit of uh, prematurity there, I think. But... Uh, I don't know. It just annoys me that camera zooming in on that idiot hanging out his windy, you know. Uh, hope you're feeling the bum, wee man. Hope you're feeling the bum. That's all I can say to you. Back <laughs> in your house. <laughs> Back in your house. Aye, uh, there was a few good images that came out of Dingwall the day, weren't there? Um, aye. aye uh, anyway, where do you want me to read these comments, Rosanda? Because you put a few videos up. Well, uh, why didn't you read the most recent ones for the video I put up the day? The, the wee. Uh, Ross County Rangers video that I put up, right. putting us four points clear. No, there's no many comments on it, but I'll read them anyway. 
Uh, Chris D, hunters of emoticons and laughy faces. I'm with you in that one, Chris. I feel exactly the same way, mate. Yeah, yeah. Emoticons and laughy faces seems to be the theme of the day, doesn't it? Well, they were doing that when they get a draw when they won three each last week. <laughs> I think, as uh, the, the poster says, the, the Rangers win the 3-3 three, three Cup. <laughs> All right, the 3-3 three, three Cup. As they were doing that. I was reading the comments on Celtic videos and it was all the laughy faces with tears coming out of them. They said, Conan, well, how do you like it now? Where's your laughy faces today? Back in yeah. your house. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, John. Yeah, it's, uh, we've got to milk these moments, haven't we? Because it's been a tough, tough season, you know. And it happened a few weeks ago, Motherwell as well, as well at Ibrox, uh, and we couldn't take advantage yet. So that's the kind of season that we've been having. But it looks as though, and I hope I'm right, that we're, we're beginning to turn the corner, John, and we're back on forum. All our injured players have returned, although Maida and Scales looks as though they're going to be out for a few weeks. So, um, yeah. No, we don't know. We'll wait and see. Yeah, yeah. All right, John, where else you got? Port Chop Express, just again, using the Seth Cole faces where the tears coming at them. Yeah, Port Chop uh, left a few comments on the, the last podcast as well. So it's good to have you back, Port Chop Express, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed your Sunday, pal. Uh, and thanks for the, the happy, laughy faces with the tears. I like to see them after what I seen last week when they uh, celebrated their three each one. Rosemary <laughs> says... Uh, well said, John. 3H1. I forgot about that. It was a 3H1. It was a 3H1 for them, wasn't it? I suppose. Uh, laughing stop FC. Rosemary says, come on, Dundee. Oh, I can not agree more, Rosemary. Can I wait? Oh, yeah. yeah. Dundee's next up next for them. And uh, they, their bottle has crashed, John. So... Come on, Dundee, put in a similar performance to what Ross County did today, and you'll know be too far away. Good comment, Ross. <clears throat> Thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, one club since 1888 says their cheating can only get them so far. Penalties, own goals, 10 minutes injury time. Well done, Ross County. A bit of effort goes a long way. Think about it. Hearts, Hibs and Kilmarnock. That's what you said a minute ago. Aye, well, that's it. That's, that's true, by the way. It's... Uh... Own goals and penalties. Was it an own goal of the day? I don't know what happened today. That was an own goal, aye. Right, okay, right, right. Uh, well, there you go. Own goals, penalties, injury time. Uh, but it's been happening all season, isn't it? So, um, he's right, or she's right. It, it can only get you so far. Aye. Exactly. Thanks for the comment. One club since 1888. Good comment. Yeah, no, good um, comment. Yeah. Uh, Paul McEwen, usual. Hunters of emoticons. Thanks for that, Paul. Always good to see you. Yeah, cheers, Paul. Good to have you on, pal. One of the emoticons looks like it's flooding. It's got that many tears coming out. Where did you get that one for Paul? I've never seen that. Uh, maybe, he's got, maybe he's got an updated phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, my phone's old. I've got an iPhone. I don't know what an iPhone 12. It's old, <laughs> not I mean, but it's still still good enough. That's it. There's a job, isn't it? There's a job. The phone you got, Xander. Just after the subject. I don't know. It's uh, it's an iPhone, but it's it's got I don't know what number of iPhone it is. is it Thirteen, I don't know. Fourteen, I don't know. Um, I don't know any number of phones. Mine's is old. I know that. It's got three camera circles at the front. So if anybody knows what model number that is, let us know in the comments. All right, mine's is only get. Uh, it's an iPhone twelve. I know what mine's is. Anyway, we're talking a lot of nonsense here, by the way. Hey, John, um, let's go into the go into the if you don't mind the the St Mirren. The the pre the preview at Smirin game read one or two for theirs. Uh, All right, can do it. Before I go, Peter's uh, Peter Stephen White says Glasgow Celtic FC champions again. Olay Olay, bit premature like myself there, uh, Peter. But yeah. it's starting to look that way. It's I don't know. Yeah. Fingers crossed, uh, Peter. Yeah, they started to lose it with Mother Ibrox John. That's about three or four weeks ago. And they've not kicked a ball since, although they got a draw against us with uh, with Silver, so <laughs> Silver. Well, um, that was a win, that was a three each one. Uh, they got a three each one, sorry, uh, against us. Uh, Celebrating like they won the World Cup at the Rain Grun with a corrupt referee. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's it, mate. Um, uh, so, what they saying, what the, what the lads and girls saying, and uh, Michelle Stewart says, oh, sorry, Xander. No, on you go, John. On you go. And Michelle says, uh, still not that good, Sandra and John, but hopefully I'll get better. 
and be back commenting. Well, you commented there, Michelle. That's good to see. Glad you did that. It's always good to hear from you, Michelle. And we wish you all the best with your health. Hope everything's okay with you, Michelle. Yeah, I didn't read, I didn't see that one, John. I didn't um so I didn't know she was still not feeling great. So get better soon, pal, because it's good to have you on the channel and we just want you to be feeling better. So all the best, Michelle. All right, all the best, Michelle. James Doran says Sefco should get a minimum three point deduction for the bottle throwing the bottle throwing and a fifty percent home support reduction for three games at Ibrox. Now they like it in them empty stadiums, James. They're the empty stadium kings, remember. They won leagues in empty stadiums that were that good. Do you know something, John? That is actually a good point. James made a good point as well, you know, deducting them the three points and uh, empty stands. But, you know, they did win the league with uh, empty stadiums, John, didn't they? No pressure. They were under no pressure whatsoever. Hence, they won the league and hence the nickname the Empty Stadium Kings. Well said, John. That's a great point, actually. If, if they get, uh, I say, a three-game ban with a three-game home stadium ban with no fans. That'll play right into their hands. Aye, uh, ten-point deduction. <laughs> You're not in that going, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not going, huh? That, that's just, listen. That's light punishment for throwing glass bottles at players and uh, throwing missiles at the Celtic stuff. You know what I mean? That is light punishment, but it's never going to happen, John. But it's, I think it's quite funny that you are not letting it go. But um, but it isn't it funny? The fact that Celtic players are getting struck with missiles, managers are getting uh, actually injured with missiles. Um, that's no funny, but it's, it's funny that you're um, you want these ten points and uh, letting it go. go. So uh, keep it up, keep it up, John. If that's what you think. Aye, no, that's definitely what I think. Yeah, uh, but I also like the idea if, if if you the fans are caught throwing bottles onto the park. If a bottle or any missile comes on the park. You forfeit the game. You lose the three points. You forfeit the game. That's what I think. That's another idea. Yeah. yeah. It's crim criminal behaviour, Zandy. You can't even just let teams away with that. No, no. He's... You can't, but it is <clears> hard. <throat> That's now been, what, eight days, eight or nine days since that incident happened, John, and we've not heard a single thing. So we've just got to move on as well, I suppose. Ah, right. Anyway, Xander, I'll blast through another couple of these comments. I have got to move on, but I'll not let that. We'll never forget that. Same as that Hearts game, we'll never forget that either. But yeah. uh, we would never sell our club. My score prediction for tomorrow against St Mirren is 4 0. Unlucky, we would never sell our club. You are unlucky because <coughs> Palmer missed an absolute sitter at the very end. So unlucky. Roseanne says it's now down to the club to hammer this violence home to the SFA. Anyway, my guess for the game is 3 0, so well done, Roseanne, but unlucky in the draw. Nah, you were unlucky, pal. It's a, a good guess, a good guess, but unfortunately, I had to go for a draw and you didn't win, pal, so unlucky. Um, and unlucky to everybody else that entered the competition. Ah, thanks for your uh, comment, Roseanne. It's always yeah. good to hope you. I hope you're keeping well, Roseanne, because I know you were quite sick a couple of weeks ago as well, so I hope you're doing a lot better. Yeah, I hope you're feeling okay, Roseanne. Um, um, I think she is feeling better. She would, she would have said otherwise, wouldn't she? So, yeah, good to hear from you, Roseanne, and keep entering in the competitions, pal. Aye. Anyway, Colin Stewart, husband of Michelle, also guessed the correct score. He did, and he was into the prize draw, the live prize draw we done earlier. He was in it. He was just unlucky. He didn't get drawn out of the hat. So, good guess, Colin. Well done. Uh, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't date in a hat, you date in a box. I've done, I done it in a hat today, John. I done oh, did you have a hat today? I eh? had a hat, aye, so yeah, well, I'd be a wee bit more professional. <laughs> and you steal off one of the grand wins, eh? <laughs> um, I, I, I think I did actually, I think it was one of theirs, but uh, it looked better anyway. Do, yeah. I don't have ever seen you wearing the hat, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Anyway. Collins also says the silence is deafening from the SFA as well as S SPFA as well as SFA. Um, the players putting the players in, a, in, in danger and all that stuff he's talking about. Uh, yeah. You're right to keep highlighting this. Yeah. Uh, let's get a good victory tomorrow. I don't want any moral ones. That flip flop is an arrogant Nosferatu do. Yeah, it was it was it was a convincing win in the end. Went to the second half, brilliant performance again. 
Um, but that's, that was a great one. What do you think of uh, James Doran? Uh, sorry, Collins. Collins Stewart saying flip flops as an arrogant Nosferatu. I think somebody said in the comments today that that wee video I put on that he looks like Hills of Eyes guy. Was it James that said that? Was it James Doran said that their manager was like the baldy guy at the Hills of Eyes. So. <laughs> Aye, aye. <laughs> a wee bit, a wee bit. Not as good as the, the, what do you call it, the, the H- Henderson's Bigfoot. Bigfoot aye, that's, Henderson. that's a belter Bigfoot, aye, that is him, isn't it? But uh, Collins thinks he looks like Nosferatu. Yeah. Aye, but, aye. I, I says that boy, Simon Murray, looked like the baldy guy at the Hills of Ice show. Aye, he scored the day, didn't he? Simon Murray. Aye. Aye, big ginger, aye, well done. <laughs> I uh, well done to the boy. Um, he was very angry when he played against Celtic earlier in the season, wasn't he, the, the ginger boy. But uh, aye, he scored the day and he's he, he gave us a big dig out, if you like. So well done to him. Aye. So I'll quickly blast through a couple of these, Zander, because we're kind of running out of time here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fish and Stevie, good to hear from you, Stevie. No heard for you in a while. I don't know if you were deleting your comments or whatever, or YouTube was deleting them. He guessed 4 1. He says, I also feel, guys, that Celtic should be pushing the bottle thrown on towards O'Reilly. Well, we've been saying that for you last week. <sighs> and also the items thrown at John Kennedy, as this is so far has been kept quiet. Maybe Celtic are and shall come out, but taking time about this. Nah, it's, nothing's going to happen, John. <laughs> That's the bottom line, isn't it? It's- we said that the day it happened. We said that last Sunday when it happened and nothing's going to happen. I spoke about it all week long. We're still talking about it now and nothing's still happened, John. So, No, I can't see anything happening, Xander, to be honest with you. But you know what my feelings are on it. I'm not going to say it again. Mm-hmm. But I'm only agreeing with myself all the time. I just think deducting points is the only way. And then get the next right around that stadium. They cannot be trusted, Xander. And they're not very good at policing their own fans, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. They've been no, getting away with it for years. No, they can't police their own fans. If they policed their own fans, the guy would have been banned for the stadium, wouldn't he? Aye. Instead of that, he's standing in a, a street corner and they're drinking buck fast and throwing the bottle at buses or something. Aye, well, that's it, John. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's shocking what happened, but we just need to move on, don't we? Aye, uh, anyway, thanks for your comment, Fish and Stevie. Uh, it's always good to hear from you, Stevie boy. Yeah. Um, Alan Brewer, that's a new name. I don't remember seeing Alan here before. Hello, Alan, how you doing, mate? Uh, Alan right. says, they will drop points in the last seven games. They have. I don't understand that they have, but then they will drop points in the last seven games they have. Oh, the right. last seven games they have left. Oh, yeah. so, sorry, I know what you mean, Alan. I just, you know, <clears throat> what a start the day. Bang on, Alan. Bang on. Three points dropped today. Hopefully another point or three dropped on Wednesday. And then you never know after the split, they might be playing us. <laughs> so it may be another three points dropped. So, yeah, good, great comment. Isn't it? good comment. That's a very good uh, comment for Alan Brewer there. Well done, Alan. Uh, sorry, yeah. I didn't get that. I had to read it twice to make sure I was seeing it right. Yeah, one, more, one more time before I go. They will drop points in the last seven games they have. <laughs> Aye, that's it. They will drop points and they did today. So there's down to five games now, John. So well, they've got six, obviously, and they've got the game in hand. So the very first game that they played, he was right. Aye, well done in your comment, Alan. Uh, that's a wee bit of predicting there. That was brilliant. Uh, Paul McComb says 5 now. Thanks for that, Paul. Um, uh, what else is Paul saying? The next comment was moral victory, cup holders and shock defeat five hours ago. <laughs> aye, aye. That's a, it's, it's a, it. It's a shock to the winter, John. It's, as I said earlier, nobody, and I mean nobody, thought that they would drop any points, never mind lose the game. No, Ross County have never beat them. That's the that one of the odds when Ross County beating Rangers were, but they've never beat them. I think I had a comment a guy earlier put so much money on Ross County beating Rangers, and I'm sure the price was something like 50 to 1 or something like that, and they put a fiver on it. There you go. And they get 250 quid back or something like that. 
Well, you know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. I read that in uh, the Rangers, against, uh, Ross County against Rangers highlights. I was reading the comments and one guy says he had a fiver on it and got 200 odd quid back. So well, well done to that well guy. Done. Yeah, well done. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah good wee one. Yeah. Yeah. Rosemary says 1-0 and Alan Brewer says 2-0 and that concludes the comments, Sander. All right, yeah. Yeah, thank you everybody for entering the competition. We, we do appreciate it. Uh, this week's competition, just the same Aberdeen game at the weekend, looking for the correct score. One guess each, everybody, into the comment section to win your choice of prize. Billy McNeil Legends frame print there. Zippo Lighter Celtic Forever logo on it and the Celtic logo and ballpoint pen. All top quality stuff. You can pick whatever prize you want. Sorry, uh, did I say Billy McNeil? It's Henry Larson, isn't it? Sorry. Henry Larson, Legend Frame Print this week, sorry. Um, and you get to pick your prize if you win. Obviously, if there's more than one correct entry, it'll go to a draw and uh, uh, one winner. There'll only be one winner. So uh, get your entries into the comments, folks, and good luck. All right, and well done to Wes for winning the last one. Uh, let us know what it is you want. And anybody in Facebook that's listening would urge you to come onto the the YouTube channel and leave your comments because yeah. I only read them off of YouTube. If, yeah, you want your co- if you want your comment read out, it'd be appreciated if you could come on to YouTube, subscribe, leave a comment, and you'll definitely get your, <clears throat> your comment read out. Apologies for that. Yeah, no, no bother, John. That's uh, well said. So, yeah, get, get on to the YouTube channel and get your guesses for the competition in as well because um, it's, it's easier to find the, the entries Um so uh, yeah, yeah. Subscribe, hit like, share, all the rest of it, um, and the YouTube, uh, sorry, the Facebook Celtic Forever channel page is called Xander John. Simple as that, Xander John. Just go into there because we can put videos on Facebook that we can't put on YouTube. So there's extra wee videos in there as well. So uh, get over to Facebook and have a wee look at the extra videos that are there. Hi, hi, hi. YouTube doesn't allow you to put videos up. Uh... Well, it does, if you can get away with it. YouTube strike is over. Rangers lose the day. Celtic win on Saturday. <laughs> Four points clear at the top of the league, John, and we'll catch you in midweek for a wee news update. So thanks for coming on, John. I no bother, and well done to big, uh, Bigfoot for running up the tunnel with the shaking the Ross County manager's hand. That was nice of him. Um, nice bit of sportsmanship there. I didn't know that happened either, John, to be fair. So that's, that's unbelievable if that's the case. Uh, yeah, well done to Bigfoot. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well done, uh, great sportsmanship. Um, so uh, we'll leave it there, John, for this week. Uh, that's us running about an hour, uh, and we'll catch you in midweek for a wee news update, John. Thanks for that, pal. Any balls, and I'll speak to you midweek. And uh, thanks, Ross County. He'll heal me. He'll heal me.